put your hand up in the air if you have eaten a banana in the last week. Whilst I cannot see the audience, I do hope lots of hands went up in the air. I'm very excited to present a meta-analysis that I have carried out as part of my master's program at the University of Exeter. Bananas are the largest herbs in the world, and they are intensively monocropped in the tropics. The commonly consumed bananas and plantains are genomic complexes of two wild banana species, which contribute A or B genomes to cooking bananas, plantains, and dessert bananas. These can be diploids or triploids. 90% of the banana production is made up by one variety called Cavendish. Commercial plantations rely on intensive pesticide spraying, as there are countless diseases and pests which can infest the plantations. Some of the examples are the banana weevil, black cigatoka, and panama disease. The latter cannot be controlled by fungicides, but there are many publications which actually report that the soil fungi can be controlled by biocontrols in a petri dish 97%, whilst in the field it can be reduced by 70% in the field. Whilst there are magical publications out there, the problems aren't solved and farmers do not rely on biocontrols normally. So I wanted to use a meta-analysis to find out which biocontrols have the largest effect against banana pests and diseases based on previous publications and does effect size vary between experimental designs, such as comparing greenhouse experiments to field experiments. The data were extracted the following way. I carried out a literature review between 2000 and 2019 and I recorded the treatment and control measurements, for example, the plant height and the standard deviation or variance and the sample sizes. As effect size, I calculated hedges D based on previous publications and the disease and the health effect sizes were calculated in a slightly different way. The more the disease is reduced, the bigger the effect is, whilst the more the plant height increases or plant health, the bigger the effect size is. Then, a random effect model with non-informative priors was used. Firstly, the biocontrol types were used as moderators, and the use of plant growth promoting rhizobacteria with mycorrhizal fungi had bigger effect compared to, for example, endophytes. The category others represented botanical extracts and such. Secondly, overall using multiple strains had bigger effect against all diseases and pests compared to using single strains. Thirdly, the effect sizes were bigger under greenhouse setups compared to field-based experiments. Fourthly, drenching the plants with biocontrol agents also led to bigger effect sizes compared to when the plants were dipped into inoculums. I also investigated the source of heterogeneity in the outcomes of experiments. For example, the setup explains about a quarter of the variance for PGPR, but for mycorrhizal fungi, most of the variance occurred between publications. So overall, mixtures of strains have the larger effect compared to using single strains or just single biocontrol, and experimental designs have an effect on effect sizes which means that we need standardized protocols for future experiments. My suggestion is to firstly move beyond in vitro testing of biocontrols. We need to use natural soils for pot trials, and we also need to understand the climatic effects on biocontrols so we can definitely select field-ready strains. I've carried out a really quick analysis for the Philippines that in four provinces I would suggest using different biocontrol species at different times of the year because of the soil temperature and soil pH levels. Finally, in order to make banana production more sustainable in the future, we need all stakeholders to get involved as the banana farmers only receive 3 to 5% of the retail price of bananas and the margins are very small. Thank you so much for listening to this and thank you for organizing this conference. If you have any questions, please feel free to get in touch. Thank you.